accountinguniversity.com. Quick bookkeeping and accounting education. This lesson is about understanding debits and credits. Debits and credits are one of the most fundamental concepts of accounting. Whether you're an accounting student, someone that's going to be tested on accounting skills, maybe a business owner or a QuickBooks user trying to figure out how to do a journal entry, which will require you to know what is the debit and what is the credit, this video is going to be perfect for you. For the time being, think of debits as the left side and think of credits as the right side. A quick example, let's say we go to the office supply store and we purchase $50 worth of office supplies. That's going to be a $50 debit to office supplies and expense account. And it's going to be a $50 credit to our bank account that was used to make that expenditure. Again, think of debits as left and credits as right for the time being. Now, the best way to remember which type of accounts are either a debit or a credit, the best acronym to think about is the acronym DEALER. D-E-A-L-E-R. We're going to split the word dealer in two. The first three letters, D-E-A, is going to be D for dividends or distributions. This is when the business owner takes money out of the business for his own personal benefit. Then we have the E, which represents expenses. All the business expenditures that we make, those would be debit accounts. And then we have A, which is assets. There's a lot of asset accounts. We're going to have our bank accounts, our accounts receivable, our inventory, our loans receivable, fixed assets, and other assets. Anything that has the word asset, that's going to be a debit account. Now, on the right side, we have L-E-R, LER. L is liability. This is all the monies that we owe to third parties. Accounts payable, short-term and long-term liabilities that we may owe to banks fall into this category. The E in here stands for equity or owner's equity or the owner's investment into the business. This is every time the owner puts money into the business, that's going to be a credit account. And the last one is R, which is revenue or sales. This is every time you make a sale, that's going to be a credit account. Now, if debit accounts are increased, they're going to be on the left side. If credit accounts are increased, they're going to be on the right side. Vice versa, if debit accounts are decreased, they're going to be on the right side. And if credit accounts are decreased, they're going to be on the left side. As long as you know what goes on the left side, which are the debit accounts, you know they're going to be increased through the left side or through the debit, or they're going to be increased through the right side if they're a credit account. Now, fundamentally, all journal entries or, or accounting transactions are going to be balanced. So the total left side of transactions or the total debits will always match up the total dollar value from the total credits. In some cases, you can have a journal entry that has multiple debit accounts and a single credit account. As long as they're both the same dollar amount, you will be okay. You can also have multiple credit accounts and a single debit account or a combination of them all. Again, as long as they both balance and are the same dollar amount, that transaction is complete. Now, let's do the example using sort of a real world scenario. Let's say, for example, I'm using QuickBooks Online and I'm looking in my balance sheet I see that I have a, an asset, an other current asset of prepaid insurance currently at $6,000. So prepaid asset or the prepaid insurance asset account is currently a debit account. So if I wanted to reduce that debit account, I would have to credit it. So let's say, for example, I want to take $500 out of the $6,000 of prepaid insurance to reduce that asset or reduce the amount of prepaid insurance and spend $500 of that on the current period. That expenditure is going to be under insurance expense and that insurance expense is going to be a debit. So I'm going to create the journal entry right here in QuickBooks Online. And the first account here is going to be prepaid insurance. So I'll select my 
prepaid insurance current asset account. And I'm going to credit that by $500 because we reduce assets by crediting them. Then I'm going to debit or increase my expense, my insurance expense by $500 by putting it on the debit side. Notice that in the bottom of the journal entry, total debits match total credits. And then once I save my journal entry in QuickBooks Online, I will go back into my balance sheet and I will notice that my prepaid insurance is now $500. If I look in the other financial report, the profit and loss, I will see that $500 insurance expense posted there as the balancing entry to that reduction of my prepaid insurance asset. Now, if you're using accounting software like QuickBooks Online or any other accounting software, typically you're not entering every single debit and credit. Accounting software will do your checks, your deposits, your invoices, and do all the journal entries behind the scenes. But there's always a couple of adjustments here and there that you have to make to make the numbers or make the books work. So that fundamental understanding of debits and credits will help you get to the point where you know exactly how to make those journal entries. Now, finally, a quick note. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, add some comments, maybe some questions of things you would like us to cover in this channel. We're going to have hundreds and hopefully thousands of videos pretty soon all about accounting and we're going to try to go in the most logical sequential sequence based on how people learn accounting in the real world but make sure to add in the comments below what type of accounting videos you would like to see next anyway subscribe to the channel and i'll see you on the next one accountinguniversity.com quick bookkeeping and accounting education